She had a stroke, broke a bone in her neck, and she'd been lying in bed for six days with nothing but Tylenol. How hard would you fight to make sure that your loved one is properly cared for? We want justice! We want justice! You had a loved one that suffered in long-term care. I kept hearing the same things over and over again. This is not a coincidence. Welcome back. That was a clip from Stolen Time, an award-winning documentary about one lawyer's work representing hundreds of families against some of the world's most powerful long-term care corporations. Well, today she is here in studio to talk about taking on the for-profit nursing home industry and the crisis of care that continues to affect us all. So please welcome to the show elder rights lawyer Melissa Miller. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So the film shows you starting a group of lawsuits against several long-term care companies. And it sounds like such a massive undertaking. And we're curious to know what got you involved in the first place to advocating for elder rights? Yeah, I really a couple of things. I've been a personal injury lawyer. I'm a partner at Howie Sachs and Henry. Um, I've been there <coughs> almost 14 years. And so I was already in the business of helping people recover their lives and, and get justice after being injured in an accident. Uh, and, and then I noticed some gaps with some of my older clients in those cases and how they were treated within the system. Their cases seemed to be worthless. They weren't mm. treated as valuable. And then I worked on a couple of nursing home negligence cases where I, I saw what was happening and they were just worth so little money. And I thought, mm -hmm. this, something's got to change here because I've always had an affinity towards <laughs> seniors. I, you know, my best friends as an adolescent were my, you know, 60 plus uh, uh -huh. next door neighbors mm -hmm. and, and, and my best friend and soulmate is my grandmother. So, you know, I, I just kind of morphed into this. Mm -hmm. It just was a natural mm -hmm. evolution. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us about some of the types of cases that you've been working on to give us a sense of what's happening mm -hmm. in these facilities? Yeah, so my cases are based in negligence, which means uh, my clients are alleging that the home uh, in which their loved one is a resident mm -hmm. fell below the standard of care that's owed to the resident in some way, shape, or form. So I've seen everything from, you know, falls that lead to hip fractures and brain bleeds causing death to uh, pressure wounds, or most people know them as bed sores, uh, dehydration, malnutrition, medication oh errors. God. So, you know... I've got one case, for instance, and it's the small, sometimes it's the very small things. Mm -hmm. She died of dehydration because her glass of water was placed just a little too far away. <gasps> Consistently, over yeah, and over again. And no one noticed. And no one noticed, and they thought she didn't want it, and they weren't tracking her water intake. Um, another case, you know, my, my client's mom ended up with a fifth size wound mm -hmm. uh, in her bottom. Uh, that it got the bone infected and she died a slow, excruciating death. And these are the cases that I represent. Oh, my goodness. I think, um, you know, there may be a tendency by some people to blame the staff and the workers. But in this doc, you actually say that they're just as much victims as maybe the the residents themselves? How so? A hundred percent. You know, the staff are rarely at fault unless there's, you know, an assault or sexual assault, which I do have a couple of those. But by and large, and I've got to quote Pat Armstrong here, one of the leading experts in this area, that the conditions of work become the conditions of care. And for the most part, the staff are under-resourced, underpaid, overworked, and they just don't have the ability to provide the care that they want to. And you see some of, mm -hmm. you know, the PSWs and, and the nurses talk about this. And, and we're seeing, you know, today, there's uh, uh, the Ontario Nurses Association is picketing outside of the yeah. extended care head office mm -hmm. to uh, try to get profit out of care as part of their collective bargaining. So it's it's it, we're we're seeing it more and more, and and that's the grassroots movement happening at the staff level. Mm. So pr you obviously prepare so much uh, for a case. You know, you gather witness and staff testimonies, organize tons of stuff. But for there was a recent case, two cases where you hired a private investigator to look into two. To um, homes. So, as part of the documentary, uh, two of the companies I had my investigator look into those two companies at a more systemic level. He's actually done quite a lot of work in each of my cases. Anytime oh, I'm wow. suing a home, mm -hmm. and he uncovered 
not uncovered, it's all publicly available information, but he started teaching me about the systemic issues and the profit margins in these for-profit chains. And that's in stark contrast to the stories that you hear from the families I represent and the staff about locking up diapers and incontinence pads or wow. you know the disgusting food that they're eating and the cleanliness of the homes like or lack thereof and so it's it's really uh it's hard to reconcile those two things mm -hmm. oh sorry you also found something incredibly troubling in one of these they found something about the pension stuff well so i mean it's and this is you know well known now but the, the there's a crown corporation called the public service pension and investment board that wholly owns one of the biggest for-profit chains rivera mm -hmm. and that C crown corporation invests the money for federal empl government employees like the military veterans hmm. so their pensions are wrapped up in the profits of rivera wow oh wow Ooh. okay so much information here so what needs to change yeah. i mean the very simple answer is take profit out of care you know, uh, as a result of the pandemic, the government impaneled a long-term care commission, and one of the outcomes of that commission was there is no place for profit in care mm -hmm. for the most vulnerable members of our population. Mm -hmm. There just isn't. And it's, it's a ubiquitously held opinion by any advocate in this sphere. It seems like such an American approach to care, if yeah. I dare say that. It doesn't feel Canadian at all. Based on the American model. Um, wow. So what is at stake if this doesn't change? And I say that saying on our show, we know the population is aging and right. aging rapidly. Mm -hmm. So what's at stake if things don't change? Everything. There isn't a single one of us who isn't impacted by this. You know, God willing, it will be us in those homes if we're old enough. We have family members, loved ones that are impacted by this. So I, I don't think any of us are immune. And I, do, I haven't met a single person who put their loved one in a long-term care home mm -hmm. because they liked the idea. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. this That's is, point. this yeah. is, you know, a lack of choice, last resort. And, and, you know, you don't, you can't predict the future of your health, yeah. you know, and you have nothing without a quality of life when that happens. True. So, so what advice can you get to people watching in us who want to better advocate for elder? You know, I, I talk often about bookended accountability and I'm doing what I can on my end, litigating these cases in court for the cases that are appropriate to do so to try to get accountability and justice there. But on the other hand is to make change with our lawmakers, the politicians. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of power there. You know, for the last, the last elections that we had, federal, provincial, was the first time ever that long-term care was an election issue. Let's keep long-term yeah. care, an ongoing election issue until we see much better improvement. Listen, Melissa, we want to thank you so much for the work that you're doing and being yeah. the voice for the voiceless. Yeah, thank you. Very important. Um, everyone, Stolen Time is now screening in select cinemas across Canada and on Super Channel starting on July 1st. To check if it's playing at a theater near you, go to nfb.ca. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.